Hi, this is Kenny Albert. You're listening to the Broadway Hat Podcast with your host, Kyle Hall, the number one podcast for all things Rangers hockey. Welcome back to the Broadway Hat Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hall. And a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Festus, Happy whatever you celebrate this holiday season. It was a great Christmas here in the Hall household. But the New York Rangers, it, I mean, you can say the Christmas break came at a bad time for them since they've been red hot of, of late. They close it out with a big win over the New York Islanders at MSG. Now 8-2 in the last 10 games. The only team really hotter than them, unfortunately, is the Carolina Hurricanes, the team in their own division who have now taken a commandingly to first place over the sinking New Jersey Devils. Uh, the Devils are just 3-6-1 and one their last 10 games. And also another hot team, the Pittsburgh Penguins, 8-1-1, the only team that beat the Rangers uh, in the past nine games. So the Metropolitan Division by far the best in hockey right now. When you look at the New York Rangers coming in or now coming out of this Christmas break at home tonight, they have the uh, Washington Capitals at MSG, a team that they're just one point ahead of in the standings as the Rangers sit in the first wild card spot. Uh, they've played 35 games so far. Their 43 points are tied with Pittsburgh. But Pittsburgh's only played 33 games so far. So they're tied right now in point wise for the number three spot. Just three points back in New Jersey and now seven points back at Carolina. For as good as the Rangers have been late recently, the Carolina Hurricanes now on an eight game winning streak. The Rangers have actually lost ground to Carolina, which is crazy when you think about that. Uh, but also keep an eye on some Ranger prospects that are in action right now. The 2023 World Junior U20 Championships have kicked off their first game uh, for Team USA. And everyone was uh, was yesterday. And the Rangers have five players playing the tournament this year, um, which is tied for the second most of all NHL franchises. Four of them played in the summer uh, World Junior Championships as well with Brent Offman, the Rangers' 2021 first-round pick, who played for Team Canada in the uh, summer version of the World Junior Championships because of COVID. Uh, he'll be back again playing on a top line with big-time prospects and Shane Wright and Connor Bedard. So should be really fun to see what kind of numbers Brent Hoffman can put up there with Team Canada, playing a major role for them. He put up six points in the World Junior Championships this last summer in six games. Uh, Adam Sikora, the Rangers' second-round pick from the 2022 draft, will be representing uh, Slovakia again. He had one point uh, in the, the World Junior Championships last summer. Had uh, It was a one goal that he scored, very pretty goal, uh, in the four games for Slovakia. Uh, so it'll be great to see him back out there again. And uh, he's had nine points so far this year playing over on Slovakia in the men's league as an 18-year-old in 20 games. So not bad. Pretty good uh, numbers for an 18-year-old playing in a professional league. And uh, so I'll be excited to see him uh, this week too. Uh, Yaroslav Kem- Chemnar. I always mess it up with this guy. I feel so bad. He's playing for Providence right now in the NCAAs. He has six goals and 10 points in 18 games so far for Providence. Big, big winger, 6'4", uh, just about 200 pounds. He was a fifth-round pick in 2021, and we talked about him over uh, the summer. He had one point. He had a one goal in the three games for the Czech Republic. Uh, we talked about him, and he is huge. He had a monster hit last year in the World Juniors, so uh, excited to see him play. He's playing very well in Providence. We're another Ranger prospect, uh, Brett um Brett Berard is there as well, who has played the last two years for Team USA, but he's actually aged out now. Uh, so he actually won a gold medal two years ago for them. Uh, but unfortunately, he cannot play this year for Team USA. But the Rangers do have a representative for Team USA. Uh, his first world junior, Noah Leba, uh, the Rangers' fourth-round pick from this last season, uh, this last year's draft, who has 11 points so far in 17 games uh, for the Colorado College and the NCAA. Uh, this will be his first time on a U-20 uh, roster. So he was kind of a guy who, uh, according to some junior experts, wasn't going to make the team. Um, had a very a rarely good camp for Team USA over the summer. They've been impressed with him. Uh, a guy who can kill penalties, really play some, you know, play some dirty work, uh, can put the puck in the net. You know, as I said, 11 points in 17 games. Uh, but it looks like he's going to be kind of like the 13th forward for the Team USA. He was not in the lineup for the first game, so hopefully we see him rotate in and get some time there. And the last player... Uh, another returning player to the World Junior from this last summer, Kale Weisenden is back again. He had a goal and an assist 
over um, the Summer World Junior Championships. He had a really pretty goal in Finland's opener, and he set up the only other Finland goals. He scored two goals. He had the setup for the first one, scored a beautiful goal in the second one. He's a big kid, 6'4", 187 pounds, really used his size to his advantage in, uh, on the goal too. Muscle the guy, had a great shot to score. Uh, so he is a player to watch. He was a fourth-round pick in 2021. Um, and he looks like he could be a prospect to watch for the Rangers just based off his size and how he uses it. And uh, he's played really well in international games for Finland. So um, a guy to watch out for there for the future future Rangers. Um, uh, I believe the Rangers use future blue in their hashtag when they talk about the uh, prospects. So five prospects to watch the World Juniors. And I should have a write-up coming out soon uh, on bellyupsports.com uh, about all the prospects and how they're doing and how they did the World Juniors just to keep you updated there. Um, and then other news with Rangers, you know, it's a, it's an off week pretty much, no games, but there's always news around the New York Rangers. Uh, report, of course, out of Chicago, out of NBC Chicago, is that the Blackhawks would target Alexis Lafreniere in a trade for Patrick Kane. He apparently is the preferred Rangers prospect that they like to have in return for Kane if there was a trade between the two franchises, obviously. Since the summer, Patrick Kane has been... Uh, the topic of trade conversation throughout the NHL with the Rangers in particular because of his uh, relationship to with Artemi Panarin and just, you know, a team on the edge of winning and needing another, you know, star forward on this team to make things happen. He's the perfect fit, I would think, especially on the right side where he plays. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't give up Lafreniere. I know when we had Colin Stevenson on, we talked about it, and we both agreed if uh, if it's – Cracks off, I make that deal in a heartbeat. But Lafreniere, I don't know if I make that move. And right now, Kako, I don't think I make the move with him either. He's finally turning around. Nine goals this season for Capo Kako. All, all at um, even strength. I mean, he's really shown strides in that uh, that Islander game where he had the bad turnover to end it. But then he came right back and scored the game winner in the third period. I mean, that just shows that this kid, he's got it. He, I think Kako's got it. I'm not worried about him. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, you have to give something up to get something back. I know the Rangers have a couple first round picks in their pocket that I know they're going to be using at the trade deadline to get someone. But I think if you're giving up first round picks, I don't think Alexis Lafreniere needs to be included in a trade. I think you go for someone else. Maybe then if that's what the asking price for Patrick Kane is, who's going to be a rental player and who knows what the cap situation, if you can bring him back next year or not. And, uh, that's a lot. It's a lot to go for a rental player. I know the deal to kind of look at is the, uh, Giroux deal from last year, big contract. Last year, a contract. You know what? I think uh, the Panthers gave up uh, Trippett, who's a f- former first round pick and a good prospect, and um, a, a first round pick going back the other way. So, yeah, that's the deal. And that's what I think Lafreniere is a better prospect than Owen Trippett is. Um, so, I would think that it's probably going to be a guy like Kratzoff in a first round pick when it all comes down to it. I wouldn't give up Keandre Miller. I would not definitely not give up Braden Schneider, who's had a fantastic start to the season. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of guys. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you look at a Matthew Robertson as a guy who's expendable because of the depth you have on the defensive side. Uh, I don't know. I think apparently, according to reports, says that that uh, Chicago wants a forward in return. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And Kane and, and Taves have given this kind of New Year's Eve uh, deadline of when they, you know, want to give the team kind of time to figure out where they w- want to be, I guess, or what they think they want to be, and then kind of present to them the future plan of where the franchise is going, and then the two of them will make their decision going forward where they want to go. But I don't know. I wouldn't do that deal for Lafreniere. No way. No way, no chance if I'm the GM. If I'm Chris Drury now, no, no way I make that deal. But that's the latest news on Patrick Kane and apparently what the Rangers want. I saw what the Blackhawks want from the Rangers, as reported from NBC Chicago. And, uh, yeah, that, and that's all really before this week kicks off. We have tonight hockey at MSG's back. We have uh, the Washington Capitals and Alexander Ovechkin, who's now moved into second place all time in the scoring list. So uh, Ovi will be in the house tonight, and the Rangers hit the road for their annual Florida swing for New Year's Eve as they'll go down to Tampa and then to Florida um, to take on, you know, two really solid teams. So two tough, really three tough games come up this week for the Rangers where they come home and they play the Carolina Hurricanes, first place team. 
Back at MSG rematch of last year's conference semifinals. Should be a very fun game there on MSG. We have a great guest this week. We're joined by Jacksonville Iceman assistant coach and former New York Ranger, Brandon Mashiner. Great interview, great guy. Uh, I, again, it was a pleasure to get to talk with him and Nick Luco down there with Jacksonville doing a great job developing uh, some of the Rangers prospects down there in the East Coast League. So uh, we talked about his great career, uh, some funny stories along the way. And it was great to sit down with him. But before we stand to an interview with Brandon, I do want to tell you about our sponsors over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Hockey fans, light the lamp this winter at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. New customers can bet just $5 pregame money line on any NHL team to win, and they get $150 in free bets if they do. If that wasn't enough excitement, you can turn small bets into bigger payouts with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets like like which team will win, how many goals they'll be scored, for even more of a shot at a bigger payout. So go and download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BROADWAY and bet $5 on any NHL team to win their game and win $150 in free bets if they do, only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BROADWAY. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Please see show notes for details. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER or if you live in New York, please call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. All right, we are now joined by former New York Ranger. He's now an assistant coach with the Rangers uh, East Coast affiliate, the Jacksonville Iceman. Brandon Master, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, so first off, I want to start off your OHL days. I want to go way back. Yeah. And uh, you started off with Sarnia there, and uh, you were there for Stamkos' rookie year. He put up 92 points as what, a 16-year-old. Yeah. Uh, how crazy was it watching him get it done? Oh, man, even at that age, he was something special. You knew he was going to be good. Um, you know, he <laughs> even at that age, he, he had his spot there, you know, the Ovechkin spot, top of circles there, where he just hits one-timers. Like, you wouldn't believe a 16-year-old would hit. Um so he's he's definitely a special player. He's still hitting them now, unfortunately. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's 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 something special. He's a good player and awesome guy too. The Rangers saw that in the playoffs last year. He sets up on the power play, and you there's so many weapons on the Tampa team, and you kind of forget about him. And all of a sudden, a one T comes flying in 100 miles an hour past someone's ear, and it goes in the back of the net. That's it. It's uh, with their unit there. It's it's something fun to watch. Like you said, they got so many weapons. You know, you got Kucherov. Headman, you know, <laughs> you can take anyone on their team. They're going to be uh, getting the goals for you. And uh, Matt Martin was there with you, too. Do you guys ever collide in practice? So that had to be uh, a good battle. Uh, no, yeah, he uh, he was there for for the time that I was there. And, uh, no, we were we never really collided in practice or anything like that. We were actually we were on a line most of the time together. So uh, we got the twin towers just coming down the wings on you. <laughs> Yeah, I would not want to line up against that line at all. Yeah, no, you two out no. there. <laughs> no, we uh, we definitely had a tough line. We had our, our centerman was Danny Anger, who didn't really make it too far in hockey, but he was another tough customer. He was, you know, five nine, five ten, um, good PK or good hands on him, but he was he was tough as nails as well. Um, and then you you got traded to Kitchener. Um, you won the OHL championship there, and also went to the Memorial Cup. How cool was that year? That was uh that was a fun year. Um, obviously it helps when you're winning, but, uh, you know, you had Pete DeBoer and Steve Spott as my coaches there and just learning from there, from them was awesome. Um, and you know, can't say enough good things about the town of Kitchener. It's, uh, lots to do there, three universities. And, uh, I had a lot of fun there. So any good off the ice stories then? Uh, you know, it, it was a good group of guys. So I'll, I'll that. It was a good group of guys. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, you you went with Belleville, right? That's how you pronounce it. Right? Was it Belleville, right? Belleville, yeah. yeah, yeah. I went to Belleville for half a season. And then, so did you want to get traded there, or was that a surprise to you? Uh, that was a surprise to me. I was uh, that was my overage year in junior, and uh, I ended up having a knee injury. I blew my MCL out, and um. I ended up being out for, I think it was four weeks, five weeks. And I came back right before Christmas time. And I literally played 
one game and they traded me. So it was a bit of a surprise. Um, but it was, I was going to a team that was making another run. Uh, so for me, it was uh, kind of where I wanted to be and, you know, I wanted to win. So I still want to win. But even then, it was uh, going to a team that was, you know, on the hunt. It was uh, definitely nice. They probably really are good as knee. He could skate again. Let's trade him. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's stable on, on ice. So we're yeah, that was it pretty much. <laughs> and PK Subban was there. Uh, that, yep. what, what kind of character is he then? Because obviously we've seen his personality grow and grow in the NHL. Yeah, now, he's now he's on ESPN. Like- yeah, he's definitely a big personality. Um, he's definitely going to be great in the media, and uh, he, he's a good player. Um, so he, he'll be he'll be good for the media, though, for sure. Then you uh, so you were undrafted, and then you, you signed with San Jose. So what? I always love asking undrafted guys like, what was the process for you like? Like, when did teams start showing interest in you? So I actually had uh, New Jersey interested in me before I blew my knee out in my overage year. Um, and as soon as I blew my knee out, I thought I was done. Uh, I was looking at, you know, universities, CIS universities to go to in Canada. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, I came back and once I started getting my game to come back again, um, I had four teams that came into the picture, uh, between New Jersey, they came back again, uh, Toronto, San Jose, and then uh, near the end, LA. Uh, started talking to me um but uh overall i thought that san jose would would have been the best fit for me and then so what was that adjustment like for you going from the ohl to pro hockey like was there a major adjustment for you or like what was the biggest thing well i was uh coming out of junior i was probably overweight well i definitely was overweight so i had to lose about 20 pounds um get my speed you know up to par i was never really the fastest but uh, that was something that I always constantly worked on, uh, was my skating. And, uh, so for me, that was probably the biggest adjustment was the speed of the game. Um, knowing that there's going to be someone on you as soon as you got the puck and, uh, knowing that you had to know what you wanted to do with the puck before you got it. Now, were you invited to any training camps before that year or was that your first training camp? Yeah. So I got invited to Columbus's training camp and, uh, the rookie camp. Uh, went to Traverse City. Uh, had a pretty good camp, I thought, and then uh, ended up going back to junior and playing my overage year in junior. Did you ever have a welcome to NHL moment, either that camp or the first San Jose camp? Uh, I wouldn't say that camp because I didn't really meet any of the regulars, but uh, you know, going into San Jose. Yeah, I was definitely starstruck. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got Joe Thornton, Rob Blake there. Uh, it's you go in the dressing room and it's just Patty Marlowe, you know, all these guys. And you're just, you know, a little bit starstruck for sure. Was there anyone on that team that you saw on the ice? You're like, wow, like that's why that guy's a super like did anyone were like, oh, my God, like that guy's unreal. I mean, those two guys I just mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> you know, two Hall of Famers. I think uh, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who else they had? They had Pavelski on that team. It wasn't Danny Pavelski. Heatley on that team, too. Sorry, who? Wasn't Danny Heatley on that team, too? Danny Heatley was there, yeah. I mean, those are some uh, legends. They had some legends. Uh, it, I mean, Couture, he was there. Yeah. Uh, who else was there? He, Dan, the, Dan Boyle, former Ranger grade. Boyle. Danny Boyle was there. And who was the goalie? Was it Niemi then? Is it right? Was uh, he? They had yeah. Niemi was there. Uh, yeah, he was there. That was actually, I think, his was his first year from uh, Chicago. I think he was there. Uh, Ninamaki was there for a couple of years. Uh, but I think Niemi was the the big one that was there. Yeah. Yeah, fun guy to probably score on practice too. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, he was a great guy though. I I love Nemo. Uh, 2010, you make your NHL debut uh, against uh, the Wild. Uh, what was that call up like, and what was the nerves like going through that game? Nervous, um, really nervous. I remember waking up, going down to breakfast, and uh, I was all by myself because I couldn't sleep. And then uh, first guy that I see at walking down is Joe Thornton, and uh, he ends up sitting down with me. I was at a table with just uh two chairs one that I was taking and one empty one and he ends up sitting down with me which you know that was you know what that might have been my NHL moment you know mm-hmm. just sitting down with him and it was 
yeah, it was something I'll always remember, just him taking the time and sitting with me as a rookie and just getting to know me. I thought that was pretty cool. And then a couple games later, you have your first NHL fight, Tanner Glass. Uh, pretty good name to get your first fight against. Yeah, honestly, he ended up just fight, uh, fighting, you know, his shift before uh, with uh, Jamal Maris. And so I wasn't thinking he was going to ask me to go on his next shift. And he ends up asking me at that point, I was like trying to make a name for myself. So he asked me that was, I was pretty nervous because, you know, first NHL fight, don't know what to expect. Um, So it was, uh, it was okay. Fight wasn't much going on. I don't think either one of us really connected. Um, And uh, so, yeah, it was just an okay fight. Uh, 2012, 13, you get traded to the Rangers. Uh, was that a surprise to you or is that something that you were hoping to maybe get another chance somewhere else? Uh, that one was, it was the lockout year. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. I didn't know what was going on. Um, cause I, they, they sat me out a few games in the American league, which I wasn't sure on why. And, um, sure enough, that was why <laughs> um, it all so, made yeah. sense after that. <laughs> yeah, it all made sense. So, um, but no, it was, uh, that was a good experiment experience. And, uh, you know, it definitely, definitely was a shock. So the Rangers, your, your first game there with them is at MSG. Uh, how cool was that experience? Yeah, cool. Uh, a lot of history obviously there. And, uh, you know, just with them being an original six, um, it was, it was cool, really cool. And Torts was there. Any any funny Torts uh, run-ins or no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, hang on, batteries going all here. Um, Torts, you know, I had one meeting with Torts. It was at the uh, when you were sending me down, and uh, you know, it, it was one on one. It was nothing that you see in the media. Um, but again, I was young and still trying to find my way into the league. But uh, it, it was good. Uh, there was one moment in uh, in Montreal when Gabrick was on the team, and uh, he ended up cheating a little bit on offense, which Torts didn't like, and they got into a little bit of a screaming match in between periods there, which I'd never seen before. And, uh, you know, afterwards – Torts uh, had a closed door meeting in uh, the next day and he came in and asked Gabby, he goes, uh, how many years have we been together? And I think at the time Gabby said, you know, three, four years, whatever it was. And he goes, how many times have you stuck up for yourself uh, towards me? And he goes, that was my first time. And he goes, good for you. And at that moment, I was just like, what just happened? Like, Coach player in a yelling match, and then all of a sudden the coach is like commending him for sticking up for himself, which you know, and every coach is different. Some guys will like that, some don't, but that's just the way Torts was. He just likes, or is still probably to this day, where you know he he likes to challenge you, and he likes to you know see see you challenge him back a little bit. You know, yeah, we've not had always not always, and it depends on the guy, but you know, I think Gabby was in that situation where he could do that. Yeah, I've had so many guys on the show that from that play with him with Gabrick and with Torts, and they're like, they would just go out, you know, like they would just go back and forth. Like, and Gabrick wouldn't yell at him; he would just kind of like yell at himself in the locker room or kind of say something to the guys afterwards. But like Torts would just kill him. Yeah. And uh, like we had Michael Haley on the show, and he's like, "I'm playing top line minutes because Gabrick got benched because he didn't, you know, commit on the defensive side. You know, he cheated, like you said, cheated on offense. Because yeah. now I'm on the ice. He goes, and now I got Ranger fans mad at me because I'm on the ice instead of yeah. Gabrick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I experienced it that night. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine, you know, if Twitter existed back then, I can't even imagine what Ranger fans would be yelling at at Torts and that, you know, this guy doesn't belong on that. They already do it now, bad yeah, enough. But yeah, you know, this guy's Twitter's belong there. Ruthless. Twitter's yeah. ruthless. <laughs> Let alone like, you know, they don't know, like, you know, either yourself or Haley. They're sitting there like, why am I out here? Like, what is yeah. you know, what's going on? And they're sitting on the bench like and Torts is yelling their name. They're not paying yeah. attention. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, that next year, um, you went down, uh, you played Hartford, you were up with the Rangers, but Vigneault was now there. Uh, what was the change? Did you see a change in that team? Or, you know, I know you were limited with the Torch side, but 
Uh, you know, did you see like a change in that locker room? I guess. Yeah, I think it was a little bit uh, uh, lighter. I guess you can say in mm-hmm. the dress room, uh, not as tense. Um, I would say that's the biggest change. But again, I was I was with Torts for you know, I think four games, yeah. and then with AV. It was like a month. So, I mean, I only had a couple of coffee twice with them. So, I didn't really get to know the dress room that well. That year, the Rangers make the cup run. In that training camp, did you kind of look around and see the talent on that team? You're like, wow, you know, maybe this team could do something? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think all the teams that I was with, it was they all went to the conference finals or finals you know as chicago san jose even when i was there it was black ace and they went to i believe it was the conference finals um so every it seemed like every team i went to was a good team uh which made it tougher for, for me but <laughs> you know it's also nice being on winning teams uh and uh i think was Kreider down in harford the first year with you was he down yeah. right yeah we were together uh jt miller um who else was on that team? Was Talbot, Haley. right? Talbot was in yeah, that? Yeah, Tal- Talbot was there. Haley was there. Newberry was there. Yeah, a ton of talent down there. Ooh, yeah, we had a really good team. Really good team. Any good Kendra Danner stories? Uh, no, not really. Um, No, not no. really. <laughs> no, no, nothing? Not really. Well, actually, I got one. Uh. It was funny. I uh, we we had our year end meetings with them, and I was supposed to be one of the first ones to go, but I had to change with. Uh, I didn't have to, but me and JT Miller changed. He was a rookie at the time. He had a tea time in the afternoon, so he asked to change, and so I ended up changing. And I think he it was. I was actually the last guy. He was the last guy to sign up, and uh, so I walk in there for the year end meeting, and you know, coaches are just eating their lunches. And I walk in, they're like, what do you need? I'm like, I'm just here for my meeting. And they're like, you didn't have one yet? I'm like, no. And they're like, oh. And so they stopped with their eating and they end up having our meeting. But that was the only one I had. They just totally forgot that I didn't go yet. <laughs> <laughs> Real big impression, I guess, from your uh, your first meeting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess they didn't have anything negative to say to me. And I was all right. So <laughs> I guess it's pretty good, right? Like, all right, well, yeah. you were fine. We'll see you, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. We'll see, see, you, see you in September. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you brought Kreider and JT Miller. Obviously, they've gone on to have great careers in the NHL. Kreider now has really established himself as one of the top goal scorers in the league. And JT Miller is kind of really blown up as a two-way centerman too. Yeah. Uh, what did you see from them that, at that young age? Like, did you think they'd be the stars they are now? Uh, Millsy, you could see it. I mean, both of them, you could see their talent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what makes Kreider so good is his speed. Uh, if he's not going offside, he's unbelievable. <laughs> um, but uh, Millsy, like the way he thought the game was really – something special and his, his compete both their both their compete level is awesome like they just both of them want to win and i think that's why they are where they are because you know i think the guys the best players are the ones that just want to win and they try to get better every day i gotta ask about shooting on henrik lundquist in practice and training camp uh i mean how special is that guy it, oh, it's something special for sure um awesome guy awesome teammate and, uh, you know, I got to shoot on him a lot, being healthy, scratched. And if he's ever backing up, he's always looking to get extra shots, get better. He's someone that try to get better every single day. And one of the first guys on the ice, one of the last on. And, you know, there's one practice I remember. It was just me and uh, another, I think it was Nash, Rick Nash. Um, he When he was injured, it was the two of us just skating on Lundquist, shooting on him. And uh, there's a couple of times when we would score a glove side on him and he would get so mad that we scored. He'd say, he'd tell us to shoot there again. And if we, there was one time I shot there twice in a row, scored both times. And he was so mad, like breaking his stick over the, the post. And that's just his compete factor. And that's why he was so good is because of his compete factor. Um, another story with him, <laughs> we, uh, I'm not too sure what team it was that we played, but we ended up losing. It was a tight game. I think it was like 2-1. 
and we're in the showers afterwards. And at MSG, you all have your individual shower. It's not one big open shower. And uh, so all of a sudden, I just hear this yelling and someone like punching, you know, a dispenser like this here. And uh, I was just like, what is that? And I like, look, and it's him. He's just so mad that they lost. And he's just punching the, dis the soap dispenser. And I'm like, man, this guy's throwing harder punches than me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so it was uh something interesting to see. I've never seen a goalie get that mad or something, but that's just, you know, someone that just wants to win and, you know, see what's best for the team. Would he throw you in the, uh, the shootout, the, uh, the breakaways on him was it, like, he's no, no, like, chance. no yeah. chance. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm dumping it and changing. <laughs> Um, uh, so that, so you get traded your second year with the Rangers, you get traded to, to Chicago. Uh, I, I guess again, like, did you see that coming or is that a surprise to you as well? Again, I'm surprised. Um, it was, uh, I think it was two weeks after being up for a month. Um, and I was playing really well with, uh, Hartford too, like game before I had a couple points, um, you know, playing my game. And then uh, out of nowhere, we're in Adirondack. And uh, G. Janander calls me. We're off the bus after pregame skate. He goes, tells me I got traded. And I was just shocked. As I said, two weeks before, I was up playing. And they uh, told me that they didn't want to send me down. Or they didn't want to send me down after that 30-day 30, 30 mark or 31-day mm -hmm. mark because I would have gone had to go through waivers. So they sent me down beforehand, and so when G told me that, I was uh, definitely shocked about that one. Yeah, uh, I remember. I remember when you got traded. I remember some like media like, "Why, you know, why are they moving on from him?" You know, because you were playing well for the Rangers, and you were playing well in Hartford too. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, why, why is this guy's name getting thrown out there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I now know why, in a sense, because um, of who I got traded for. Now knowing, you know, looking back and seeing what happened. Uh, I now know why. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, unfortunately, that all yeah, came out. Yeah, 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 yeah unfortunately, big. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, so you get to Chicago. Obviously, unbelievable team. Just superstars up and down the lineup. Um, 2015, 16, you play almost the entire year there in Chicago. Talk about playing with Kane, Taves. I mean, how unbelievable they are up front. And then back end, you got Keith and Seabrook, and then. I think personally underrated Corey Crawford. I don't think he gets the respect he deserves. Yeah, he's uh, another another goalie that's you know works every day. And uh, me and him actually connected really well when I was there. Uh, our stalls were kind of beside each other, and uh, we he was probably one of the guys that I hung out the most. Um, just unbelievable human being, and uh, that that whole group. Uh, you can really see why they won and won for so many years um, because of their group. And, uh, you know, I sat beside Seabrook and he's one of the, one guy that, you know, really made me feel like at home. And, you know, I see Kane thinking, you know, you, you hear about all these past stories of off ice issues and whatnot. So you kind of have your own mindset on him. And, you know, I was, the totally opposite one of the best guys ever um when he comes to work he works he has his routine and you know one of the first guys on the ice one of the last guys one of the first guys in the gym and same with taze like they're they're workhorses and you know they're 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 a family too um you know if you came in you're on their team and they treat you like family um, so that's, to me, that's why they won for so many years. Cause they're, they're a really tight knit group. There's a rookie on the team named Artemi Panarin, who's turned into uh, quite the player for the Rangers and, and generally in the NHL. But, uh, I mean, he had an unbelievable rookie season there. So what was your first impression of him? Uh, I mean, he didn't speak any English, so he didn't really talk to him, but he, you know, I, I say to this day, I had the best seats in the house watching him and Kane together because and to this day, I still think that was one of the worst trades you could have made. <laughs> um, it, it, to me, you find a way to try to keep that guy because, I mean, 
look at him. Like, it, you have him and Kane on the same line together. Like, that's something special. Um, and it was, it was fun to watch them. Well, listen, I'm hoping that we get a reunion here in New York soon. I, I think him and Kane together would be unbelievable having back again. They would. They would. But it's just a matter of if they can afford that. And, you know, you don't – they're a young team. The Rangers are a young team. You don't want to give up what you've built for something that you might get, you might not. You know, yeah. like, I think you got to – you look at Tampa. You know, everyone's talking about blowing them up and all that stuff early on. But now, because they've went through all those uh, struggles, they grew together, now, now they're – you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Their uh, dynasty. Dynasty. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. Like, and even this year, they're still they're still good. So it's uh, it's annoying. It's annoying when those teams just kind of linger. You know. Yeah, but they linger because they've been through the. No, process. I'm saying it's annoying. Yeah, it's good for them. Like, yeah, it's annoying. So Rangers, like... To me, Rangers are in that process right now. So. Uh, it's just a matter of a few tweaks here and there, and, and they're right there. Who are some of your favorite guys to watch now? Uh, to watch now? Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to say McDavid. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy's a highlight reel every night. Um, you know, uh, I, I love watching Ovechkin try to, you know, get that uh, record. I, the guy just loves the score, so watching that <laughs> is, is really fun. Um, I mean, you can go across any team, and every team has at least one or two guys that's really fun. You, McCarr, like anytime I I watch him, it's you know he he's breaking guys' ankles like every night, and it's it's so fun to watch. The new NHL is really fun to watch, really fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's some really good young stars in the NHL now, and it and they're starting to market them better too, which is good because yeah. a yeah. lot you know, ten years ago all the West coast was basically like forgotten about, you know, and now yeah. I think ESPN is doing a good job with their new coverage and TNT of, of kind of getting these stars back out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just depends on the player too, and what they're good at, like what you're trying to look for. Cause he, each player is really good at something. Like you'd think of, you know, Ryan Reeves, big power forward, uh, may not have the scoring touch, but you know, he's very effective at what he does. You look at Tom Wilson, you know, has a little bit more scoring touch, but very effective with what he does. So he, I, I think they're fun to watch in that case. It's not necessarily always a skill guy. Mm-hmm. It, it's just that whoever is, you know, good at what they do and and watching them be good at that, it's fun to watch. You made the jump overseas to Germany and you played in Slovakia. Any good uh, stories from over there? Oh, goodness. What type of stories? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, anything crazy happening over there? I, I would think Slovakia would be crazier than Germany. Well, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a language barrier in Slovakia compared to Germany. Um, you know, our, our head coach didn't speak a lick of English, so we had a translator, and half the time the translator didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> so we had to figure it out on our own sometimes. And, you know, there was one time where he started – talking and then the translator said something but it was wrong and i just started laughing and then the coach was all mad because i was laughing in the middle of the meeting so it was just like you know that that was uh that was definitely a bit of a a culture shock um germany germany was fun it was good lifestyle good hockey um you know they have they call it the american league graveyard because of all the american older american league guys who uh just want to go overseas and try it out over there. And uh, so, but it's, it's really good hockey in, in Germany for sure. Any good travel stories over there? Travel? Yeah. My goodness. Uh, I mean, there's times when we went, we were at the South end of, uh, of Germany and there's a team in Bremerhaven that's 10 hours away from us. So there's times when we play up there and wouldn't get back till eight in the morning. Uh, because we'd have a bus ride. I was like, you're busting that? Oh, man. We bust it, yeah. So if we, if that ever happened, like, we would have, the guys would have a nice TV set up in the back, and we'd be watching, you know, NFL on Sundays. And because then it'd be, you know, 8 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night and be, you know, midday 
back in uh, North America. So it was like perfect time for watch uh, afternoon football for us. That's not too bad. I'm thinking you're not going to sleeper bus and you're just rattling around there. For uh, hours. We're not on no sleeper bus. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> they, they had double deckers over there in Germany. So coach would be in the bottom and we'd be on top. So that was kind of nice. They'd always have uh, beers for us too and a cooler downstairs, which the downstairs part wasn't nice because then the coach would know who was drinking a lot. And stuff, <laughs> Send a rookie down to the fill up yeah, the shirt and bring much, back yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you made the jump behind the bench uh, last year joining uh, Jacksonville. Uh, what led to that decision? You know, it was kind of a fluke. Um, I was still working out and training uh, to play. Um, I just didn't know yet if I was going to come back to North America or go back to uh, Europe. Um, and uh, I blew my shoulder out my last year. And uh, so it, over in Europe, they all kind of heard about that and didn't want to deal with me being injured. So I kind of was looking to come back to North America. And uh, so anyways, uh, Nick Luco called me and talked to my agent as well about me coming to play. And I wasn't sure about coming and playing the coast. Um, so, I, you know, I know it's a grind down here with all the travel and the amount of games and stuff like that. And uh, I heard that he had an assistant coaching job open. So I kind of asked him, I was like, well, what about your assistant job? And he's like, you want to interview for that? And I was like, oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so I was like, well, give me a couple of days here and maybe we'll do an interview. So anyways, he ended up interviewing me for it. And uh, at the end of it, it was, it was kind of weird. I was talking to my wife and she, I just said, you know what? That was like talking to the same person. And she's like, really? And so anyways, a week later, he calls me back. He's like, offered me the job. And so I took it and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, it's all you guys had a great year last year. Uh, 40 wins. Was, we had Nick on the show and he's, you know, about 40 wins and a playoff uh, series victory. So, I mean, a great first year of coaching for you. I'm sure you take all the credit. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, no, it was uh, honestly, it, it's been a good combination for us of working together. Um it's very seamless and we seem to be on the same page a lot of times. Um, he's introduced a few new systems to me and vice versa. And just anytime we have an issue with anything, we just talk it out and it, it's been a really good combination. Um, and it helps that, you know, we're both on the same page, probably 90, 95% of the time. You play for some fantastic coaches too in your career. You have, Torts, AV, Quinville, uh, Tom McLennan, Pete DeBoer. I mean, unbelievable coaches. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what, what have you taken from those guys that you've kind of like brought into your style? I'd say a little bit of everything. Um, you know, when I talk to McClellan, he's one of those guys, even DeBoer, where every day they're coming in, hey, good morning, how are you? Talk about your family. You know, make it really personable. Um, you know, it, even torts, all of them, you, you take a little bit of hard work, you take a little bit of, you know, their systems, uh, what worked in their systems, what didn't, and you kind of make it into your own. And I think that's what makes coaches who they are is they take a little bit from each coach or there's one coach they take a lot from, uh, depending on how many coaches they've had. I've been blessed, blessed or unblessed, depending on how you look at it, to have multiple teams i take it as being blessed because i've had you know the coaching staff that i've seen coaching me and mm. take a lot from them and it's not just the coaches it's the players you know you, i look back in chicago and you know learning from even d like seabrook and kane taze all these hall of famers and it's just like it, there's tons of knowledge out there that you you learn from so for me i just take a little bit from each of them and you know, try to implement it into my own players that we have here. And it's not a, for me, it's more of guidance and, you know, Hey, this is what I've experienced. My past is what worked for me and the teams I've been on and what hasn't worked and just try to guide these guys through it. Cause it is a developmental league and mm -hmm. it's all about playing and, and getting them to the next level. And then are you going to call anyone out like torts? Is it going to be a, an all out fight in the locker room pretty soon or no? 
I honestly, I tell these guys that like, <laughs> don't, there's just a time and place for that. But for me, I, I, I was always raised to, you know, respect your elders and, you know, the big FU matches to me is not a way to get your point across. Um, but I, I do think there is a time and place for that as well. So we'll be, we'll stay tuned for that. Then we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, couple of questions before I let you go. Uh, what's your favorite arena you played in? Uh, you know, uh, there's two places and even though they're home arenas, that three, I should say, actually, um, so Chicago United Center, that one really rocks. It was awesome. The the Shark Tank, that one really rocks. Surprisingly, really rocks, especially in playoff times. Like it, my first playoff, it was the it was shaking. The arena was shaking. It was so loud. And then the other one is the Bell Center. That one, I I didn't like the ice as much, but just the atmosphere was unbelievable. From the moment that they like did the whole fire at center ice thing, uh, that was cool. I, was that the C? Montreal or Chicago or Calgary? No, Montreal does a f- thing at the at center. I ice think right? so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, it it really it really rocked there. It was cool. Chicago, that your first anthem in Chicago was that kind of like what was that experience like? You get chills. Yeah, you get chills. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be cool. That's gotta yeah. be awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. That's on a bucket list for me. I haven't been to a game out there yet. That's I wanted. To, I was in Chicago a couple years ago during the hockey, and of course they were away the entire week. I was there. I'm like, you know, this timing sucks, but yeah, it, that's a, that's a bucket list place to go. It it was yeah. You got to check it out. It's Chicago in general is just a really awesome town. That was probably my favorite place to play. Yeah, I, the teams I played for had to settle for a Bulls game. I've been in one of those. That's pretty cool. Which too. was good too. It was good too. But yeah. they were they weren't a very good Bulls team at the time. They got blown yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> um, what was the toughest guy you played against? Like, was there any guy that like you were like in awe of on the ice? Like any guy, not toughest, like but like you know the best player you've ever seen. Um, I mean, to me, toughness comes in different ways. Like, there's obviously fighting toughness, mm-hmm. and then there's you know being hard to play against toughness where it's, you know, guys that always have the puck and try to get off of is, is to me, that's tough to play against. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But like, uh, goodness. I mean, Datsuk was unbelievable. Like it's hard to not say him because he always had the puck on a string and <laughs> just trying to get it off of him. Like I never played against him, obviously, like, cause I was on the fourth line and he was first, but just watching him and watching, you know, our top guys struggle to get it from him, you know, it was pretty cool to see. And then uh, your first NHL goal uh, comes against Ryan Miller. That's a good name to have it against. Uh, what's the memory from that? You know, yeah, it, it, that one was a long time coming. Um, I remember even my first game, I had an opportunity to, sh- to score and didn't happen. And, you know, it, there's, times where i had opportunities that just never came to me so for that one to come against him was uh really special and you know i was just to draw one back you know i did my thing get to the net and uh won a battle battle net front and ended up finding that loose puck and putting it in uh there's only 10 seconds left and we had already won the game i think it was three one and put it up to four one with my goal but uh you know to do it against a goalie like that that was pretty cool so it was a celebration like afterwards, like were you like bang on the boards or was it kind of like, oh, we're up three to one, like or four one now. Like, oh, no, I, I, I celebrated hard. All right, good. It good. came a long time for me. <laughs> and it was, uh, and I, someone told me one time that you never know when your next one's going to be. So you, you may as well celebrate hard. So I, I celebrated hard on all my goals. <laughs> Vancouver's probably like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> yeah, oh, probably. Yeah. 10 seconds left and this guy's celebrating like he won the cup. <laughs> Uh well good luck this season. Uh hopefully we'll stay in touch with you guys and uh and hopefully you're back to the playoffs this year, make another run down there in Jacksonville uh and make the uh, you know the Rangers organization there. There's been so many good players down there now, so uh it's fun to watch that team. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us this week. Uh, it was awesome to get him on the show. It was awesome to talk with him. And, again, I can't thank the uh, the Jacksonville franchise enough down there uh, for, and Alex Reed for setting up those two interviews. It was great to get to know those two guys. And hopefully we get them back on the show soon because Jacksonville had, I think they had one loss since the since Nick's episode aired. So they've been red hot ever since I had them on the show. And uh, believe me, I, I told them, I, I reached out and said, you know, if, if you guys ever need – uh, they come on the show for another hot streak. Let me know. I'll be more than happy to have them on the show. Uh, but, yeah, it was great to have him on. It was cool to hear all those uh, stories of his hockey journey going from player to coach now. Uh, so I want to wish him all the best of luck this year in Jacksonville. Uh, and hopefully they get back to a playoff spot. They had a great run their first season down there between the two of them. And uh, hopefully they get back to the playoffs this year and build off that uh, really franchise season last year, the best season they've ever had down there. Uh, so I can't thank him enough for taking the time to uh to come on the show again and that does it for episode 112 of the broadway hat podcast make sure you go and subscribe to the podcast on apple podcast you can leave us a five-star review there until christmas e or really christmas day we'll give it a stretch there every dollar i'm sorry every five star uh every five star review that's left a three dollar uh donation is sent to alex's lemonade foundation and i want to thank the foundation for reaching out to me on twitter and thank uh, for uh, all the support we've given this year. We've raised over $100 for them. So awesome, awesome. Thank you to all of our fans who have gone on there and left the reviews. And please go on, leave a five star review. It takes 30 seconds, maybe not even 15 seconds. Leave a five star review. Subscribe to the show. Help with an amazing cause that helps fight pediatric cancer. Make sure you can go and subscribe to the show on Spotify. Leave us a five star review there. You can find the show on Google Play, Amazon Music. Uh, Pandora, Spreaker, anywhere you get your podcast, you can find us there. Make sure you follow the show on social media on Twitter at Broadway Hat Pod, on Instagram and Facebook at the Broadway Hat Podcast. Make sure you follow my personal Twitter account at K Hall and Y. It also makes sure you check out our YouTube page. We just released our first Ranger Trade Tree history featuring the Mark Messier trade, which I think is the best trade or the most important trade in New York Rangers history. Uh, led to the Rangers winning the 94 Stanley Cup and Mark Messier becoming the Messiah in New York. So make sure you go check that out. I think we have almost over 800 views uh, over this last weekend. We released it on Friday, so please go check it out. Uh, we put you know put a lot of hard work into it. And very uh, very excited for the final product that came out from it with all the videos and everything, and a very cool project to work on. And hopefully, if it you know, from the earlier response, it seems like people are really enjoying it. Um, I'll put a new one out. I have a couple ideas for ones, but if you have one, shoot me a DM for a trade you want me to look into, and uh, we'll see how it played out and what kind of pieces played out from it. So uh, thank you to everyone who's checked that out on YouTube so far, but go check it out, the Broadway Hat Podcast on YouTube, and go check out the new Mark Messier uh, little trade doc that I did there. So thank you to everyone who's listened to that and watched that so far. And that does it. Happy New Year to all of our listeners, and hey, we'll see you next year. 